guys, what is going on? I am here to react to Fast Five, the pitch meeting. Also, just in case you were confused, and was like, who's that boy on Ali Robbins' channel? <laughs> no, it's me. I'm actually going away to Texas for a week, and I'm waiting to the last minute to get everything done, so when I go on the plane and get to Texas, I'm fresh and so clean, clean. I thought I reacted to this one because this is the one before I checked out of Fast and the Furious that I actually enjoyed. I believe this is the one where they steal the safe that had over $100 million and they all retire. Because after a while watching this film, so I think that's it. And if it's not, who cares? Like after a while, there comes a point when watching Fast and the Furious where all the films kind of blend together. This could be it, it could not be. This could be the film where The Rock is introduced into the franchise, I believe so. But who knows? Let's just hop into this. So, you have a new Fast and Furious movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And since we called the fourth movie Fast and Furious, you know, I think it's pretty obvious what we should call this one. I, d I have no idea. Uh, Furious 5? What, Furious 5? Why would we call it Furious 5? I, I don't know, this is stupid. Why would we, it, that doesn't even mention how fast things are gonna be. I'm sorry, it was dumb. So what's the title? Fast 5. Oh, oh, okay, so, th so they're not furious anymore? No, they are gonna be furious, but we're not gonna spoil that in the title. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, I think I'm just Confused. I find it really interesting though that they couldn't just keep I mean I don't know what the creative mindset was between taking all the films which are now nine of them and just changing up the title that are not necessarily cohesive in any way you know this is what happens when you see the popularity of a story that you created where you have to create sequels and in doing that you start doing a lot of things that don't necessarily make a lot of sense but you still stick to the form well <clears throat> I would say stick to the formula of what worked. That wouldn't make sense because if you watch the first film and then you watch the fourth or the fifth film, wherever it is where everything just dropped off and everybody became superheroes, you realize that they didn't even stick to what made the story even popular. Now it's just explosions and fast cars, unnecessary circumstances that put these characters in dangerous situations that you know they're not going to die from because they're superheroes. Like it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And if they really stuck to what the story initially was about, I don't know, would it be popular? I don't know. And I just find it really interesting that the story has turned itself into another comic book world where no one dies and if they do, they're coming back. It was being transported on a prison bus, right? Oh yeah, he murdered someone or something. Oh yeah, he did a bunch of stuff. He crushed a guy with a car in the last movie. Anyway, his friends come to break him free. How did they manage that? By making the prison bus crash and flip like 20 times. Oh my God, wouldn't that kill him and a bunch of people on the bus? You'd think so, but actually no. Oh, I am completely satisfied with that explanation. Great. So anyway, later the team is all split up and on the run and Brian and Mia, they head to Rio. What did they get up to down there? Well, they meet up with Vince, remember, from the first movie? He's from the first movie. He and he's probably the only one from the first movie outside of Dominic, Lenny, that actually dies off and doesn't come back, which is so weird. I don't understand that. Like, yeah, the nerd from the first one did die, like he was shot up. I don't know about the other ones. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Or was there any other ones? Yeah, there was. There was another guy. Dude, like, if you if you didn't watch the first one, you would think that the people that you keep on seeing in all these newer films were from the original, but there was one guy in particular outside of that guy with the mustache that was in the first one that you don't see at all. And I don't think he died. Or at least if he did die, it was when they were in human form, so he didn't come back. People started to transform into superheroes when they hit like the fifth or the sixth film, we if you follow the franchise, you know, no one really dies. Yeah, and so he lives down in Rio with his wife and his baby. Okay. And Mia holds the baby, but then she has to run to the bathroom to puke. Uh, yeah, well, babies are pretty gross. Yeah, that's probably part of it. But also she's pregnant. Oh, she is. She's with child and stuff. So anyway, Vince then invites them on a- <laughs> No, why? Stop it, enough, stop. Stop it! I paid my bill! So anyway, Vince then invites them on a job so they can get some money, because they don't have any money. And what's the job? They need to steal some cars off a moving train, and these things were seized by the DEA. Oh boy. Yeah, and then Dominic Toretto shows up too. He's there now. How did he hear about the job? Unclear, but then the bad guys, they... 
That is kind of true. I don't remember how he knew about it, but it was like they were trying to make it like a big reveal because he got out of the bus. But it was it was kind of weird. Like things just happen in this film. You know, you can't really use logic to explain things that are happening. Like it is what it is. He just happened to know that the they would be on this particular train as they are trying to steal these cars and they're actively being hunted by people that don't want them to steal the cars. Like, it just it just so happened that he was there. Like, don't ask too many questions. <laughs> He's there, everything's all right with the world. But then the bad guys, they really want this one specific car from the train, so the good guys, they get suspicious and they don't let them take it. What do they care if the bad guys that hired them want a specific car? I don't know, but they freaking do care, so the movie can happen. And so what do the bad guys want with this car? Well, later we're gonna find out that the car's radio has a computer chip in it. Okay. And this thing has the delivery schedule of a bad guy named Reyes, and this guy, he runs Rio. So how come this Reyes guy didn't hire somebody to just steal a car radio instead of several cars and messing up an entire train? Well, yeah, that would make a lot more sense for sure, but then where do the explosions come from? Well, there wouldn't be any explosions, so why would we put that in the movie? Oh, right, okay, I see what you're saying. So what Listening to Ryan George explain things, so funny. Because in watching the film, I'm not thinking about it. I'm like, wait, if he's just looking for this chip, what is the point? And I never understood why, because they were just looking to steal cars. They didn't say, hey, steal this particular car, Brian and girlfriend. They just so happened to just be on a train and they needed to steal cars. One person comes and says, hey, we need this car. They're like, no, don't ask. I'm not asking questions. It just it just happened that way and we're supposed to just run with it. But also, again, yeah, the fifth one is one of my favorite Fast and Furious films. So I accepted it, even though when Ryan George is explaining the situation, it doesn't make sense, but I just ran with it. So anyway, Dom has to fight some guys and he throws one of them off the train and he hits a bridge at a super high speed. Oh, heck yeah, kill that guy, Dominic Toretto, take his life. Yeah. It's darkness forever for that guy. His family's gonna have to mourn him. I guess, I guess they will, yeah. Would you say that the guy that Dom kills was close with his family? You know, I actually, I didn't give that much thought. Maybe, maybe he was. Did this guy have any kids? I don't, I don't know. So in a situation like this, who knows? notifies the kids that Dominic Toretto threw their dad off a train. Uh, Does the criminal organization help with funeral costs or is that just- Don't ask too many questions. Don't even think to count the bodies, okay? You know how many people they've killed yet we still root for them? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're all, like literally, they're all criminals. Like, let's not forget that we root for Dominic and his crew, but they are all criminals. <laughs> they just happen to be the better criminals, so we root for them because the other ones are worse than them. Yikes. The family. Okay, you're really reading into this guy's death a lot, sir. It's just a very fun, quick, simple killing, and then we move on. Oh, okay. You, you know, there are gonna be a lot of these in the movie. We can't stop and do a deep dive on every person Dom kills, you know? It's just, it's fun, and they're dead, and we move on, and it was a great time. That's fair. <laughs> anyway, then the bad guys kill a couple of DEA agents, and the good guys get blamed for it, and then Brian and Dom have to jump off a massive cliff, like, from a height that would kill literally i don't know it was just like such a cool scene yeah it's a little bit unrealistic but it was a cool looking scene for the film and i was here for it one oh my god are they okay what do you think i feel like they're probably okay they are okay yeah wow 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 so anyway that bad guy reyes he captures them and he ties them up with chains and handcuffs oh boy it's gonna be tough to get out of that situation actually it's gonna be super easy barely an inconvenience oh really yes he reyes takes off and he just leaves two incompetent henchmen to kill them so they just break out of their chains and take them down easily oh man bad guys hate sticking around to see if the people they want dead are actually why would you if you're you're such a terrible person and you're hunting a certain person who stole something from you that you really really wanted why would you not watch them die it's just like in films and I I just recently started watching Outlander on Netflix I might end up watching it on my patreon if you guys do not know I have a patreon and I do full-length film commentaries up there once you hit a certain tier you can watch me watch and talk about a full-length film in that show the villain the bad guy who was like the worst of the worst person he gets encountered by the protagonist who had the opportunity to kill him and yet does not kill him why you may ask because the show has to go on and that's why they injure the guy but they never stick around to make sure he's dead didn't make any sense there it doesn't make sense here and there have been plenty of films where that happens where the bad guy doesn't kill the protagonist when they had the opportunity to because if they did the film would end and i it always annoyed me because it doesn't make sense a real villain a vil, a real evil person 
wouldn't just walk away when they had the opportunity to kill someone who stole something from him or did them wrong. Don't believe me? Watch Goodfellas. <laughs> Watch any Martin Scorsese film from the past and then come back to me and try to argue that. Dead. They certainly do. So anyway, Dom and Brian, they decide they want to steal $100 million from this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, that's gonna be the... Okay, so great. This is the film that I was talking about. I was trying to figure out which one this was. Generally like the one with the safe because it was very over the top, but I still was able to follow it without checking out. This will go down in history for me as the best ending to a Fast and Furious film. So I believe this is the one where Vin Diesel and Brian, uh, well, Dom and Brian drive off. Oh man, bad guys hate sticking around to see if the people they want dead are actually dead. They certainly do. So anyway, Dom and Brian, they decide they want to steal $100 million from this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, that's gonna be the plot of the movie I decided. It's gonna be like Ocean's Eleven, but if everybody was less charming and George Clooney fell in a vat of testosterone. I like the sound of that. But there's a badass American agent named Luke Hobbs, and he's, he's tracking their every movement. He's relentless. Oh, and what's his deal? Let's oh, go! No. Let's go! All new season, all new season, big brother! Ugh. Oh, he's a real- That was annoying. That ad was annoying. You couldn't pay me enough to watch that thing in its entirety. In the five seconds of watching that, I wanted to shoot my own face. He's a real tough guy. He's bossing around the Brazilian police and stuff. Why would he be allowed to do that? Oh, well, he's got some muscles and they're very big ones. Oh, okay, I didn't realize. And he hires this local cop, Elena, cause her husband was murdered. So he figures she can't be corrupt. And she's pretty. So we're gonna tie her into this story somehow, some way. Let's be real, come on. They weren't just gonna hire her because of her her husband being murdered. He clearly has the looks. I guess that makes sense. So anyway, because this is Creatine Ocean's Eleven, they need to assemble a crew. Oh, so who's on the crew? Oh, we've got people from the other movies, sir. We're talking Roman, Tej, Giselle, Han. Wouldn't this Hobbs guy be keeping tabs on former associates suddenly entering the country? Apparently not. Well, okay then. So Reyes is keeping all his money in a 10-ton safe inside a crooked police station. Oh man, so what does the crew do? Well, they're gonna get an idea identical safe so they could practice opening it up. How do they manage that without raising any flags? Well, one of them says something about having another life before meeting everyone, so. Oh, a very vague explanation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do they intend to break into this thing? Well, it turns out that Tej is an expert on safes. He knows everything about them. What? Since when? Well, he's like, I had a life before I met you guys. No, he didn't. I remember. <laughs> he had a garage and he was street racing. What is going on? <laughs> Trust me, I remember this scene. Like again, this is this is one of my favorite films out of the franchise. But even that made no sense because if you go back when he was first introduced into the franchise, you saw what he was doing. Okay, maybe before that film, you know, they didn't want to address what he was doing prior. But stop, we're, we're taking everything at face value. We already debunked the whole situation about the brother from Fast 9 from the first film. So let's stop playing games as if these people have all these secret talents and gifts. They're all street racers and they're all for the most part criminals. Like stop playing games. Well, well thank God all these people have mysterious pasts that directly involve hyper specific heist related skill sets. Yeah, and so they realize that the police have these super fast cameras and they're gonna have to drive really fast to avoid being seen by them. Okay, so they need to get their hands on a super fast car so they go to an illegal underground street race. Wouldn't the crime guy that runs Rio have a bunch of people there? Apparently not, no. Very weird. Well, at least we're gonna have a cool underground race scene, you know, get back to our roots. Oh, no, we're not going to show the race. Oh, we're not. No, we're just going to cut to after the race. I mean, we got to keep things moving here. There's no time to waste. I mean, as a heterosexual woman, I think it's really odd that you start your franchise from being about street racing, half naked girls, tricked out cars to now it's literally like watching Triple X with Vin Diesel born supremacy but with street racers that are now working for the government when i'm watching fast and the furious the thing that i expect is to see half naked girls street racing and tricked out cars like it's just really weird how it's transformed and i'm going to continually say it because i feel like They've lost the mark because they made so much money and they just stopped giving a shit. Okay, so then they're gonna spend like 30 minutes of screen time driving around in a circle, you know, doing tests, try to outrun the camera. Uh, well, yeah, if they're gonna have to do that in the movie's climax, I guess they're gonna have to practice. Well, actually, no, they're not. Oh, they're not. Yeah, because at a certain point, they're like, hey, maybe we should steal some cop cars, you know, that won't raise any red flags on the security Ooh. cameras. So that like 30 minutes of screen time where they're doing tests, that was just completely unnecessary. <laughs> like maybe we could have showed that underground street race. Well, they're gonna race each other in the cop 
cars just for fun. What, with the American agents and Brazilian police and a bunch of criminals looking for them? Yeah, they feel like having some fun, so they, you know, risk everything. Very fun. So then later, they're about to go on the heist, but then Hobbs and his guys show up and they stop them. So both the testing and the cop cars led to nothing. Pretty much, sir. I'm just kind of filling time with vague car things. Oh, vague car things are tight. So then they're going to get ambushed by the criminals and Hobbs' men are going to die and Vince is going to get killed. Oh, no, he was from the first movie. And the only one after the first film that actually gets shot and actually dies. R.I.P. Paul Walker. It seemed like he just branched out and started doing his own thing. I respect that. The franchise has gotten to a point where everybody is a superhero because Han for sure died. But somehow, some way, miraculously, he really didn't. So I call bullshit. If they're gonna kill off Vince, who honestly was supposed to be like the bad, like the bad good guy in the first one, but I genuinely liked him because he was bad only because he was right about everything and we're supposed to be rooting for Paul Walker. So let's be real, I actually enjoyed Vince, but it's just really odd watching this film and then watching the other ones and how he gets shot and so he's dead. Han gets blown up in a car after being hit full speed and is still alive for some reason. Get the fuck out of here. I still love you film, but I, I can call bullshit out when I see it. And since Dom saves Hobbs's life, him and Elena, they decide to join the crew and, you know, kill a bunch of Brazilian cops. Oh my God. Yeah, so they just rip the 10 ton safe right out of the police station. And then they drive it around and whip it around like it's a freaking mate. Watching that scene was actually pretty banging. They are over the top of these films. I totally get it. I'm not even knocking it. That safe scene where they're driving it around the city and it's like hitting cars and hitting buildings and I was here for it. I loved everything about it. I can call out bullshit when I see it. When when they're driving cars from out of one building and into another, I call bullshit. It still looks awesome when you're capturing it for film. This scene was hands down one of the best scenes in this film. If not, out of all the later Fast and Furious films that have come out, this safe scene is awesome. Crush a bunch of cops and properties and stuff. So does this count as terrorism or is that, that's something different? I don't know, but anyway, they managed to kill the bad guy in the end. <laughs> How did he respond again? I don't know, but anyway, they managed <laughs> to kill the bad guy in the end. Wow, 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 wow. And Hobbs is like, all right, I'm gonna give you guys a 24 hour head start, but then I'm coming after you and also I'm keeping the safe okay but then it turns out they actually swapped the safe in the middle of the heist so they get to keep all the money when did they coordinate that wasn't Hobbs with them as <laughs> don't ask questions stop it don't ask questions Ryan I had the same question when I watched it and I had to stop myself don't ask questions Allie you know what happens when you ask questions they actually have a, a whole clip where they actually show how they switched it out but there's no fucking way that happened. <laughs> like, there's no way. I, I'm gonna run with it. It's fine. Don't ask questions, Ryan. Plan this new version of the heist? Yeah, unclear. But they managed to pull it off and everybody's happy and everything went great. Their friend Vince died. He had a baby at home. Just a happy ending all around. Tej opens up a garage, so that's fun for him. He starts a business? That's gonna be very easy for Hobbs to track. Everything just worked out for the good guys. So what do you think? Well, it sounds insane. But maybe that's the direction we need to take this franchise moving forward. I certainly think so yeah any ideas of who to cast as this new Hobbs guy well he has to be big enough to be threatening to Dom right so I figure somebody that looks like you know with Vin Diesel ate one of the mushrooms from Super Mario I know just who to get <laughs> one of the mushrooms from Super Mario <laughs> all right guys hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely give it a thumbs up if you really like it definitely subscribe let me know in the comments below did you enjoy Fast Five as much as I did did you find the bullshit in it too while you were watching it or was it something that you ended up realizing like years later after the fact? Mine's happened as I was watching the film but I didn't identify it as bullshit too much because I enjoyed the film and I have no problem admitting when something doesn't make a lot of fucking sense even though I enjoyed the film altogether and Fast Five is one of those things. I found it interesting that Vince died. We saw him get shot. Well, I don't think we saw him get shot, but we saw a bullet hole, he dies, he has a child. We see Han blow up in a car after getting hit at full speed, but yet he's, like, I don't know. That just pisses me off, and that's not obviously something that I recognized at the time, because Han being brought back into the franchise happened like two or three films later. The, the safe scene where they are driving around town was an awesome scene. Like, we're not gonna talk about the fact that it is kinda like, you, you killed a lot of people. Like, despite it looking cool for film, you killed cops, 
you might have killed some people just minding their business, going to work, walking across the street. We're not gonna even talk about that. The damage as well, like people's cars just got demolished. That They were just minding their own business. They come, they go inside of a bank to deposit some money and they come out and their car is just, just a hunk of metal. We're not gonna talk about that, all right? Don't talk about it. Terrorism, what are you talking about? Stop it. Don't think about it too much. Otherwise, you'll start to realize maybe the good guys aren't really good guys. But let me know in the comments below what you think about the film. I'm very intrigued to read what you guys think. Also, what is your favorite Fast and Furious film? But for the most part, it hasn't really changed. The first one and the fifth one are still my favorite. If I had to choose like my favorite favorite, it would be the first one. You just can't beat that original story and the fact that everybody was human. <laughs> also, if you guys do not know, I have a Patreon. I got my first patron. I want to give a huge shout out to Raymond Mandina. Hope I said your name correctly. What's going to be happening on my Patreon is I have three different tiers. The highest tier, you are able to watch me give a full length film commentary on films that I watch on streaming services indie films, crazy films, low rated films. It's a thing. And I might eventually, sooner or later down the line, do commentary on all the it mans, on all the on box. I discussed this in the previous video, how I've seen them and I genuinely enjoy martial art films. Realizing that I had been trying to do my film commentaries and I was doing them wrong. Once I realized that, okay, this is how you do film commentaries. I'm gonna start doing those up there. So I'm probably not gonna be doing film reviews anymore on this channel. I'm just going to dedicate all of my film opinions on my Patreon. So if you guys do not know, definitely check that out. Link in the description bar below. I created a whole video as well talking about why you should become a patron. Cause it's gonna be a fun time. And I feel like a lot of people appreciate the fact that I was a person that enjoyed films that people may not think that I enjoy. Like I enjoy independent films. I love, like I said, martial art films, foreign films. They're very intriguing and it's very interesting to see how people make films outside of America, as well as it's very interesting to see how people make films when they have a small budget in comparison to Hollywood films when they have a big budget. I enjoy dissecting it, it's very fascinating. And if you guys like what you're hearing right now, again, all the information will be linked in the description bar below. So do check that out. But if you enjoy my reactions to these pitch meetings, you know what to do, like, subscribe, Hit the bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out. And don't forget to comment. I love reading your comments because <laughs> you guys are reckless, but I love laughing. And I'll see you all in the next video.